Perhaps? No, it's me. I've muted it. Barbados. Okay. Um, just letting you know that in pre preparing for this last night, um, I was uh, I chose a surname that was on the bulletin board forum, um, Howard Benbrook. Um, but in the course of looking through the, the parish registers, I found so many Blakes. I had to drop an email into Elizabeth Kipp. So Elizabeth has got uh, many, many Blakes from Barbados from from the very earliest days. So I know she in particular is primarily interested in the Barbados stuff. But why should you guys care? Um, in my experience, most medium-sized studies um, include some people, uh, depends on the scale and when they went um, to Barbados, appearing in the Caribbean. Um, some folks may find them in the, in the census as being born in the Caribbean. Um, and generally, my advice is start off in either Barbados or Jamaica. Um, currently, Jamaica is a great place to start because uh, a lot of the parish register images are available online for free. Uh, can be searched by an individual surname and the surname links directly to the parish register image. That's what you can anticipate for Barbados in the not too distant future. So what Family Search have done have released um, images um, of the Barbados parish registers. So, so why was Barbados um, filmed by the, the Mormon Church? Well, it was one of the stepping sto stones for migration off to North America. So they filmed the birth, baptism, marriage, death, and burial registers from the island's in inception, pretty much from about the 18th, uh, 1630s, I should say, up to about 1930. And some of those films have now been digitized and can be browsed currently. Um, in... I want to say the mid to late 1800s, the original parish registers were all copied from the originals and a beautiful set of copy registers were created. At the same time as the registers were copied, they were indexed. And um, what we see currently released are parish register images um, from 1637 up to 1887. Um, and as I say, the the index films for those, and I'll show you how to use the index films in a second, or the index images, um, cover that period from 1637 up to 1887. And they're indexed by baptism, marriage, or burial, by year, and by the initial letter of the surname. Some other background for Barbados. Civil registration didn't start there until about 1890 or so. Um, and from a historical perspective, this tiny little island, I, I, I think, was that Jim? Yeah, Jim's put up a little map of Barbados. It's a tiny little place. It's 166 square miles, which is roughly, for those of you familiar with UK geography, about the size of the Isle of Wight um, or the size of Chester, the city of Chester. So it's a tiny little place, but around the 1650s or so was at the, the beginning or perhaps towards the peak of its importance in terms of wealth generation for, for Britain. 1650 was also during Cromwell's time, so many royalists, the wealthy folks who couldn't stand the parliamentarians, left the UK for America. Um, some settled in Barbados. Um, some folks were forced to, to come to, to the beautiful island of Barbados through slavery, and some, some white folks decided to become indentured servants. Um, so there's, there's a route into Barbados directly from the UK, but also from New England. Folks from New England that found the, the religious, let's say, pressures there, uh, found it too much to, to handle and headed down to, to Barbados. Barbados was claimed by the British in 1625 and settled in 1627, and the island was not inhabited at the time. Um, and it's remained in British hands up until independence in 1966. And generally speaking, what you could expect to find there is the usual stuff you'd find in any English parish register. Pretty much the same is true of Jamaica. By 1650, um, because of the wealth generation through sugar plantation and slavery, um, the, the British realized this was a, a scale business, growing and cultivating sugar. So they took Jamaica by force in 1655 from the Spanish, and it became British-owned up until 50 years ago this year 
when Jamaica um, sought independence. The same thing is true in Jamaica, expect to find English parish registers to all intents and purposes there. There are no bishops transcripts for the island and there are next to no useful census uh, material for the island. There was a census taken in 1679 of the white folks and another one in 1715 again of the white folks um, and there's been nothing that survives or is available since. Nothing more on the background for Barbados. Let me take you straight away to somewhere warmer. Um, I'm going to take you initially to Jamaica to show you what you can expect if you don't want to plow into the, the Barbados registers right now. Uh, Bob, if I may interject. Of course. There is, there is a question from uh, Tessa on the, the group chat. Ah, what is a bishop's um, transcript? Good question. It's, does anyone want to answer that? Paul? Yeah, I'll, ha I'll have a go. Um, it, think of the church like a, a large organization with branch offices in lots of places. Um, each year, each of the branch offices had to make a report back for the, the bishop or the archdeacon, depending on the, on the year. So the local incumbent or perhaps the uh, parish clerk copied out all of the register entries for that year, usually making an entry on, on the parish register um, so that they come back next year and, and know where they finished, the, the previous ones. And uh, they sent that off to the, the local bishop's office or the archdeacon's office. I forget, one of them is every seven years and the other one's every six years. Oh, sorry, every, every year apart from the seventh. Um, how well did I do, folks? Yeah, very good. Uh, the significance, Tessa, to, to the bishop's transcripts is if a local parish register has been lost or destroyed you've got some hope of getting a copy of the bishop's transcript also if you can't read something in a primary register you've got a, a second handwriting attempt um, later um, but if a parish register is lost and there's no bishop's transcript then it's it's pretty much game over I think it's also worth noting isn't it that though, because they were copied out once a year there are a secondary um, source and subject to all the usual manual errors that you see in the parish registers sort of squared. Absolutely right, yeah. Good point. Uh, the other thing is you'll often find British bishops transcripts available on CDs from various family history societies in preference to the actual parish registers uh, because bishops transcripts seem to have been easier to get hold of and transcribe when they were done than in fact the parish registers. That's a great point Colin especially for Cheshire which I know fairly well um, some of the churches haven't deposited deposited their original registers so they're not available for companies like Ancestry or, or Find My Past to, to copy but the bishops transcripts tend to be more readily available but they tend to not be complete um, so it's worth knowing Tessa if you're ever doing any stuff in the UK whether you're looking at an original register or, or a bishops transcript and if you don't find some someone in one then you can check it on the other sometimes you do find details in the bishop's transcripts that are not in the original register. Um, but I think that's a subject of another talk. Right, hopefully you can see the family search screen. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to take you to the record set for the Caribbean and then quickly show you what you can expect to find if you head for Jamaica. <coughs> this is ultimately what Barbados is going to be like. So here we've got a record set showing Jamaica, births and baptism, 1752 to, to, to 1920. Not that many records, but that said, this doesn't have an image icon. So this will be um, the equivalent of the IGI, I would imagine. But these two record sets, civil registration of births and Jamaica, Church of England parish registered register transcript 1664 to 1880 do have <coughs> images available so let's go ahead and click into the parish register transcripts and search for a name that I know is going to come up for Elizabeth there's Blake what you immediately get <coughs> let me make this a little bit smaller is a list of in this particular case baptisms parish country and the individual's name so let's pick a an unusual one. There's a Cunningham Blake. Usual transcript detail, citation information. So the key information about the event is 
baptised on the 11th of Jan 1818. Okay. Interesting in the father's not identified. So let's have a look at the image. Can you see this here, view image? We'll just click on view image. Just before you move off from there, Bob, oh. just... Let sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I was going to say was, if you notice the copy box at the top, if you just want to copy that transcription, I know we did out with Hub last time, but just the copy box there will allow you to copy that transcription and paste it into anything you like from there before you go over to view the image. Well, thank you, Colin. I don't think I've used that before. Yeah, you can then, it just sits in your clipboard, so you can then paste it to whatever you want. But all, all that appears is the Cunningham Blake down to the, um, the citing this record. All of that will then appear um, in, your, in your clipboard on your PC. Oh, superb. Thank you. So let's go off and have a look at the original register image that's behind this transcript. So just click on View Image, all free. And what it's doing now is it's saving you the chore of looking up um, entries in index in indexes. Um, the image quality is very good, to be honest, which is why this interaction is, is fairly slow. So it immediately comes up size to fit the screen. Um, and somewhere on here will be, oh, there he is. Jumps out at me, Cunningham Blake. <clears throat> Cunningham Blake of ooh, Aeolus Valley and he's a Creole um, this happened this morning interestingly it's 1880 1818 I should say baptisms this is before slavery um, was abolished so I'm assuming this is probably a special register because here we've got the race of the individual and we've got Creole. Creole just means in this particular case that the individual was born in Jamaica as opposed to African um, by birth so the Africans broadly here would have been within a generation of um, being slaves so in other words these folks were born in Africa and brought to Jamaica um, in their lifetime whereas these guys, the Creoles, were born in Jamaica. So this is some kind of special um, baptism register, but, but you, get, you get the idea. Um, a couple of things to point out. You can see the handwriting is all pretty much consistent um, and not as you'd expect to find in perhaps a normal parish register. But again, that's because this is a copy of the original. Um, I'll give you another example of that in, in Barbados. So ultimately, this is what you can expect to find. Family search, look up a name, and then the uh, image will be attached to, to that record. So let's now head back to Barbados. Before you leave, Bob, oh. do, you want to do you want to cover the downloading and printing? Or, or oh, yeah. Gonna... <laughs> Thank you, Colin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sure that all our customers are treated the same. Yeah. There's a couple of things you can do here if it's difficult to read. You can invert the image and see white on black or black on white. Um, if you get some of this, you can see some of it here, some of the bleed through from the page on the other side. Um, you can save the image to your computer if you wish. You can obviously do a, a screen grab if you've got a screen grabbing tool um, or you can print the image. The other thing that we've noticed is this URL is particular to each of the images in the range. So if you keep a copy of that URL, it will always bring you back to this image within an image range of 1 through 188. Okay. Let's head back to Barbados. So currently... Caribbean, wait for that screen to populate and we can go to Barbados. So here we've got what's available for Barbados currently. So these three sets, baptisms, burials and marriages, unusually in my experience the Latter-day Saints folks did film the burials, so those films are available. Um, but it's this record set that we're most interested in. Excuse me a second. It's this record set we're most interested in, church records 1637 to 1887. Um, and we're going to go ahead and browse the images. That said, if you, if you find a name in here, you can quickly look up the corresponding register entry in, in here also. If you find someone in the IGI, 
and the RGI doesn't have full coverage right back to 1637, you can again come back to this record set and, and browse through the images and find who you're looking for. So let me show you how to do a one name extract using the index films. I've mentioned that the island's tiny, um, 166 miles. Ignore that one for a second, but there are 11 parishes in this one country. Um, for those of you that are familiar with British geography, um, Barbados is, is probably the size of a small county. Um, there are multiple churches in each, or some of the bigger parishes, but we're, we're talking about a parish that would be roughly equivalent of a, a small to medium sized parish in, in the UK. So the 11 are Christchurch, St Andrew, St George, St James, St John, St Joseph, Lucy, Michael, Peter, Philip, and, and Thomas. Those are the three, uh, sorry, 11 key parishes on the island. For some reason, Bridge Tra Bridgetown has been treated separately. Bridgetown is actually a part of St. Michael. Um, but under Bridgetown, we've got the registers of the, the military um, garrison churches, um, one at St. Anne's Garrison and the other one nearby at St. St. Mateus. Don't need to worry about those for, for now. When we do come to look up a film entry for a particular parish, we'll come back to these uh, to look up a baptism, burial, or a, or a marriage. But it's this one that, that we're interested in, all parishes, in other words, Barbados wide films. Most of the events are Church of England, Church of England being the established church in Barbados. There are some Catholic, some um, uh, Jewish, some Moravian, some, some Methodist, but the vast majority of, of folks will be found in the Church of England. So we're going to head there. And what we're going to do is try and extract all of the surname entries for Howard Benbrook's name. Um, fortunately, they're all at the, the, the early years, so I don't have to scroll to, through too many pictures. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is, you can see the index films here. We've got baptisms year range and then that represents the initial letter of the surname. If we scroll down the list we've got burials. For some reason I'm going to sneeze, excuse me. No I'm not, it's gone away. Um, and, and marriages. So they, these are the three key records and if you could imagine the index is being constructed separately from the parish registers so the primary individuals will be found in here so if we go right back to the very top we've got the baptisms for a 1637 to 1757 and there will be an a somewhere there's another one there 1758 to 1806 there's an a 1807 to 1824 you get the you get the idea we're going to head for Benbrook, 1637 to 1757. What it's doing now is loading the first image of the baptism index, beginning with the letters B, for all parishes in the Church of England in Barbados. Same layout, same tool, same interaction. This page here is the remnants 1757 for the letter A. So we want to start here with the letter B. You can see that 1637 to 1642 that there, there wasn't a single baptism that has probably survived. Okay? Uh, so Paul, here you can see... Uh, there's a side comment from Paul. Many of the baptisms are for older people. Um, not no, necessarily so. Not. I was talking about the Jamaican registers when we were looking at it, Bob, hoping to draw your attention to it. Oh, I see. I, okay, right. It, it, you will find this, Paul, particularly for slaves and former slaves. Um, it was illegal for a slave to be, well, let me put it this way, it was illegal for a Christian to be a slave. So in both Jamaica and Barbados, it was illegal to baptize a slave. Do you follow the logic? So you weren't allowed to have Christian slaves, so you weren't allowed to baptize um, slaves. So what you'll find is you do see adults being baptized, um, typically on the day of their wedding. 
Um, so if they subsequently marry, they may well be baptized on the same day. Some of the registers do show that uh, it was an adult baptism, some don't. But we're probably talking in the years running up to 1834 um, or thereabouts. Much of the early stuff, you'll find very, very few slaves. Generally speaking, 1834, folks before 1834 were mostly white. After 1834, you've got whites, blacks, and coloreds. Okay. Uh, I have a comment, Bob. Yeah. Uh, I now understand why the uh, family search uh, area here is uh, is organized by uh, the initial letter of the surname. It's because looking at the image itself, I see the book has uh, has tabs that are uh, the initials. Absolutely right. So mm -hmm. this particular index books is arranged by name. You do need to be a little bit careful with this, Jim, because if they run out of pages for a letter. They will use, you know, pages elsewhere. So you do have to look at each page. Understood. But, you're, but you're, you're, you're right. So here you've got the year, you've got the surname, full name, parish where the event occurred, volume, and the page. Now, had all, this, all the parish registers survived, then you should see um, almost every parish listed under here. So all of the 11 but generally speaking, some of the parishes that, that the registers haven't survived. But, but let's not worry about that at this stage. So you would meticulously look through this list, transcribe the year, the name, the parish, the volume, and the page, if you're going to do your one name extract using these index entries. So the first one we're going to look for is 1645. Bambrook Richard somewhere here. Um, Call you a liar. Oh, sorry, I'm I'm looking at my marriages rather than baptisms, which I can't find them. 1650 is the first year we want to look for. So we've run out 1647. If you highlight the image. You can jump to any image if you know what it is, or you can scroll through using these arrows. That scroll forward, scroll backwards. Um, so let's scroll forward on this particular one. So here we go, 1650. Let me try and make that a little bit bigger as well. Oh, I can hear someone trying to escape. <laughs> okay, can you see that okay? 1650. Yes, William Blake. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get the hang of it. Maybe we'll look at that one. Um, I no. see Amber, child of Richard. Exactly. 1650, <laughs> Blake, William, St. Michael, Volume 1. <clears throat> and in William's case, you would try and find image number 14. 14. Yeah, I think it is 14. Um, let me jot that one down. And if we have time, I'll take that. Blake, St. Michael. <clears throat> One fourteen. Okay, these are the the two in the one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Speak sixteen fifty, Bambrooks, a child of Richard, Christchurch, volume seventeen, page sixteen. Another one here, Bambrook, Elizabeth, Christchurch, volume seventeen, page seventeen. So we found those entries, and you would meticulously go through the list. There's another one in sixteen fifty four. Let me just scroll through just to prove that I've done this. Um, and these were the only three that I found for Howard's potential uh, ONS surname and his um, potential variants and deviants. So here we can see, oh, um, can you see that? 1654, Bambrook, Anne. Christchurch 1727 okay and you would meticulously go through the years 
jot these details down and then head back to the Barbados church records. Now we're going to look at the actual Christchurch registers. The first thing to do, um, Church of England, we'll choose Church of England. We want the baptisms for 1650. And now this is going off um, and it, it, these registers are at the archives and this is actually what you would see if you were at the archives in Barbados. Um, and the first image you would be presented with is coming any time <coughs> At this point, we had the interlude music in the background while waiting for the next presentation. <laughs> I have a uh, technical question about the Hangout that someone might be able to answer while we're waiting, and that is, under group chat, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven names have joined, but not everyone. How come? Um, not everyone that was invited or? I think you have to click on the chat button at the top to join the chat. It's not automatic. I've joined, I've clicked it so that the panel opens and I see the messages but my name doesn't show there. Uh, if, if you do type in, uh, you will s go ahead and type something into the little chat panel there and uh, you'll see the messages from ME. I also see you listed, Jim. I bet you that you're not listed on your own. I'm not listed on mine. Okay, maybe that's it. But I see your listed, name I think. in the group, so no worries. No, I'm just curious. Thank you. Can anyone tell me, with the headphones, is the sound supposed to come through the headphones? Because at the moment I was, I'm getting all the sound off my computer and nothing through the headphones. Is that how it's supposed to work? No. <laughs> no, no, you haven't uh, told it to put the sound out through the headphones, so you'll oh, need to right. do that as well in okay. the little gear wheel at the top. Right. Um, if you go up there and look at that, Debbie, um, the settings, the, it will be coming out of your speakers instead of out of your headphone. Oh, so right. the top one is your camera, then you've got microphone, then you've got speakers. Right. I'd also be sure if you have you know, your headset has any connections to it, that those are firmly in place. Because the one time my headset part wasn't in um, for the speakers, but my mic was in. So I was speaking through my headset, but I was hearing the same way that you are. And it just meant that I had to tighten the connection. Welcome I back, Bob. I apologize for that. My browser just crashed. So let me, let me try and resume. Uh, we were looking at the first image. And this is the first image of the parochial register of baptisms for volume 17 and we want to find page 16. Uh, there's no correlation directly between an image number and the page but I just happen to know because I prepared this earlier that the image we want is 12. As soon as you type in this box you get the go button and it will go off and now jump to page um, 16 and it takes a few minutes, a few seconds I should say, for oh. the image to, to appear. Welcome Debbie, we're in the middle I'm, of exploring I'm, Barbados uh, baptism records. Right, I'm back again, but I've, I've now got a picture, but I haven't got my headset on, so it's the headset that was set up that was obviously causing the problem. Uh, okay. Very good, we have you live video, right. and we, we can hear you. So this entry, if you remember, was the child of Richard, Christchurch, Volume 17, which we're on, page 16, so it's somewhere on this page is a child of Richard. We, you would just look through and find which one has that particular entry, and there it is. Here you can see 26th of June, the year will be at the top, 1650. As it says, a child of Richard, would we presume it, I, I, you never presume, uh, it, would it be a, an assumption that the child died uh, shortly after birth? I think that's probably a safe assumption, but I couldn't find the child's burial, Jim. Um, 
So um, I think that might be a safe assumption in this particular case. Um, or certainly expect to find a, a, a burial, but I, I certainly couldn't find it. And a couple of things that I want to show you just to bring your attention to on this register. At this level of detail, you can see that all the handwriting is identical, um, very well structured and uniformly created. Again, this is evidence that this particular baptism register has been rewritten and copied from the original. Okay, two more pieces of evidence to substantiate that outrageous claim. Here on the 3rd of December 1649 we have Elizabeth the daughter of William somebody. When they've come to rewrite and copy out this this copy register they could not read the original surname that was in the original. So Elizabeth, daughter of William, could well languish in this register forever. The second key piece is if you have a look at this date, 1650, and note how the, the year changes, 1649 to 1650 in January. So that tells us that this register was certainly copied out sometime after 1752 because this transition is Gregorian rather than Julian. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we found that entry for for the child of Richard. The next one we want to look at is on page 17, which is this page here. And we're looking for Elizabeth, daughter of Robert Banbrook. And then the final entry in, in the baptisms was on image 17, which we'll go to, please go to 17, Ooh. oh okay, and on page 27, uh, Bob there's a question from Tessa, okay, uh, in the chat. Okay, I can't see the chat whilst I've got this screen up. Hold a sec. Um, sorry, I can't see the okay, chat. Sorry, um, I'll go ahead and ask a question. I just didn't want to interrupt you. Why are there not any references to the mothers in these records? Aha. Okay. <laughs> you just woke me up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this this one actually does mention the mother sometimes, not always, but sometimes. The entry we're looking for here is the 20th of October, which is this particular one here. So and the daughter of Robert and Mary Bambrook. It's it's just I think entirely random, Tessa. Either one or two things has happened, either it was never recorded originally. Um which is actually quite common I think back in this day. Um it for English parish registers as well. Um so yes, you have, to have an understanding of English parish re registers before records, because unlike, say, a Catholic record or a Lutheran record from Sweden or something, there are no um, sponsors or witnesses or godparents, whatever you want to call them, and you know none of that. How much you paid to get baptized or any of that kind of information, right? You're absolutely right. This is it, Tessa, and even for English registers, having the mother detailed. It is can be pretty rare for all but the, the busiest parishes. The other thing that's unusual about these tests are if you were looking at English records of this date, you would probably be reading Old English. You wouldn't have been reading modern English like this, or maybe even Latin. So that that's something to bear in mind because quite often all you see is I, I've been looking at some recently at 1640, and it says. Um, the, the modern English translation is John, baptized son of John. And basically it's John Baptismata, Fia de John. And that, that is the parish register record. So you, you've got to bear in mind that this is a lot better than some English records of this date. Yeah, that's a good point, Colin. Um, and I think that's purely because these were copied out much later. I mean, registers of this... I suspect they were probably trans translated from Old English or Latin at this stage as well, given the dates. Quite possibly as well. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, 
but from what I'm used to, it, it's a delight to see writing so clear. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. These can, you, you can almost get two entries, Tessa, in almost this space here between these two lines and a normal register, um, which is just ridiculous in some of them. But one of the things I do want to point out on this particular page is if you can imagine this being a baptism register that's been opened out and there's a tight binding down here, the light source has caused a shadow and you can't really see too clearly what month that is. So what you end up having to do is taking a guess, we get down to September here, September the 29th, so it's reasonable to assume is this is going to be October. And you follow the numbers through until you get to a typical month break and you'll know that November and potentially December. Oh, it's okay, it's going to be October and November in that column. All right. So that's the baptisms. We're going Can to I ask a question? Of course. You know the, 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 the slider panel, it's dark. Can you actually move that? Or is uh, it fixed? Oh, yes, you can. I didn't know you could, could do that, Paul. Yes, you can move it. That's fine. That's all I need to know. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I also have a question, and that would be, how do you determine when the records may have been transcribed? Um, oh, that, hmm. um, I, I do have on my website, Jim, um, a transcript of the laws, um, and I, I, I want to say it was about 1850, um, or it, the, 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 the copying began in 1850 is my my sense there was a law passed in 1849, if my memory serves me right, that insisted on um, essentially baptisms and marriages and burial registers being properly kept. Um, so I if think you that invert the if you invert the image, does that dark strip come any better? Um, I don't really. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> I mean, you, can, you can see a TR, which which. I don't, let me try and zoom in on that. One other thing while you're looking at this, Jim, that I'd point out is in certain records, and I don't know about the records in Barbados, but um, I know from looking at the records up in Newfoundland, in the front of the book and in the back of the book, and this is the same with a lot of the Swedish records for the Lutheran Church, they'll write a note about what they did and when they did it. And so sometimes you just kind of have to browse through the beginning or the end of a book where somebody's telling you, or else I know each of these record sets, the um, Family Search has written up something about, like, I think it's phrased about this record. And so you can kind of read more about it, and then they'll give you links to look up other information. So sometimes you have to do a little bit of meandering around to find stuff. Makes sense. Yeah, the, yeah, the information about the, you know, what's in the records isn't too detailed on these, um, Tessa, just because um, I think... They, they haven't included the, the registers that are missing, for example, um, and you can get statements like this, baptism 1637 to, to 1836. And I would saw. tell you not to mention that to anyone from Family Search, because when you do, I did that for Newfoundland, and then they asked <laughs> me to work on the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I, I, it's perfect. It covers everything. So the last one we're going to look at, we're going to head back for the indexes under all parishes and look up one single marriage. Church of England again. Um, we're looking for a marriage this time, so we want to scroll past the baptisms, scroll past the burials, and look for the marriage index for bees for the same period. Here we go. Marriage index, 1643 to 7, 1768. Let's go ahead and select that one. And we've got two marriages on the first page, if I'm not mistaken, under 1645 and 1646. Oh, let me turn that around. So 1645, here we've got a 1645 Bambrook Richard Parish, volume, page four. Again, Christchurch, volume 20, page 4. So you're beginning to see that we're seeing marriages and baptisms in the same parish. So chances are that these horrible, well, relatively horrible deviants are um, probably all related. And the same thing down here, 1646, a year later, Bambrook Roberts, 
Mary's, it'll be the same parish, Christchurch, volume 20, page 6. So let's now go back, look at Christchurch, Church of England, choose the marriages for the time period concerned, 1643 to 1848. And hopefully, whilst it tries to retrieve the first image, my browser won't crash. <laughs> and good. And again, you'll get the front cover of the parish register. It's a parochial register of marriages volume. I know it's difficult to see, but that will say 20A. And this is the Barbados Department of Reference, reference number. So RL1 talks about the series and, and volume 20, but you need to concern yourself about that. And the image we want to see is on, on image number six. Again, these are two examples of some of the problems with the original registers of this particular date. We've got a complete one on this example um, on the 21st of October, 1645. Let me go and find the year, 1645. And we're looking for, oh, here we go, October the 21st. October the 21st, Richard Bambrook and Anne Cook were married. And that's all you get, Tessa, in this particular record. That's it by way of a marriage. No, no uh, other details at all.